Merry Christmas. I welcome you, I welcome you friends, family, brothers and sisters to our Christmas Eve service from the Everett Church of the Brethren. I welcome you. I welcome you and I wish you all a, a Merry Christmas and I, I hope we pray that as we share some carols, as we share the scripture story and some other scripture texts, that this will be a blessing for you, a blessing for your family and, and that we may all truly know the presence and, and the excitement, the joy of the coming of the Christ. I want to begin with a, a resource from the 16th, 16th century English carol called the, the Gaudete, and I, I got to tell you, I'm not sure that's pronounced right, and I'm not familiar with this, but found this wonderful hymn of praise. I'm not, I'm not going to sing, it doesn't translate well to, to the music, so here's the English translation, originally from Latin. Rejoice, rejoice, Christ is born of the Virgin Mary, rejoice, rejoice. It is now the time of grace that we have yearned for. Let us sing songs of joy. Let us give devotion. God was made man, and nature marvels. The world was renewed by Christ, who is king. The closed gate of Ezekiel has been passed through. From where the light rises, salvation is found. Therefore, let our assembly now sing, sing the songs to purify us. Let us praise the Lord. Greetings to our King. Let's pray together. Oh God, we invite you into our gatherings. Whether we are sitting alone or whether we are with family, we are together with you. We are together as one body, the church of the Everett Brethren. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would be near to us to help the reality of the newborn King become real again to each of us. We pray for your help in this challenging time. We pray for your presence to be a healing, a source of healing. We pray for your, your coming to be a source of joy. As we hear the scriptures, as we sing the carols, come, Lord Jesus, come. In the name of the Christ child, we pray. Amen. So I want to invite you to join me in singing uh, Joy to the World. We'll sing two verses. We will have the words on the screen. And I invite you to sing. To sing as though we're together and to hear as though we're together the joy of our Lord at work among us. Let's sing together. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace And makes the nations prove The glories of His righteousness And wonders of His love And wonders of His love And wonders, wonders of His love And now now we write, light our Advent wreath. We've writ, lit, we've already lit the candles of hope, faith, joy, and love. This evening we light the center candle, the Christ candle. With this lighting we read from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you've increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy at the harvest, as people exalt, dividing plunder. 
for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and for his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Christ is our peace. The angels proclaimed peace when they sang to the shepherds on the night of his birth. And as we, the people of God, choose to live according to the way of Jesus, peace comes. It's not an easy peace. It's not a, it's not a peace that is free from challenges, but it is peace that comes to our souls Peace that gives us assurance of life, love, and, and of eternity. And this peace makes all the difference. I want to invite you to sing with me again. Uh, this is Away in a Manger. We will sing the three verses of this as I play and lead us with the guitar. No crib for a bed The little Lord Jesus Lay down his sweet head The stars in the sky Look down where he lay The little Lord Jesus Asleep on the hay The cattle are lowing the poor baby wakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky, and stay by my cradle till morning is night. Beneath Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. For our New Testament reading, uh, we turn to Titus chapter 2. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is He who gave Himself for us that, we might, that He might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for Himself a people of His own who are zealous of good deeds. Declare these things, exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one look down upon you. I invite you to sing with me again uh, two verses from Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hark the Herald Angels 
sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hail the hem-born Prince of Peace Hail the Son of Righteousness Light and life to all He brings Risen with healing in His wings Mild He lays His glory by Born that man no more may die Born to raise the sons of earth Born to give them second birth Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. <laughs> he went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger for there was no room for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them they, and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which, is, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured these things in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. May the word of God come alive in our hearts today. Merry Christmas. I guess you realize this evening I'm here in the barn and, and I, I do want to talk a few minutes to the kids, to the children. Whenever I found out we were going to have to record Christmas Eve service, I, I thought we have to do it in a barn. We have to read the Christmas story in a stable. That just has to be. So I am thankful for the naps and I'm thankful for little Astro here, our nosy little Jersey cow who's helping me out with this. And I want to talk to you a little bit about peace. You know, as we've lit the candles on the Advent wreath this, this season, we've talked about hope and faith and joy and love and and today tonight we lit the Christ candle which reminds us of peace how is Jesus how does Jesus bring peace how does Jesus bring peace to our hearts and to our world and I think there are, there are three ways I want to remind you first of the prayer that, that I shared back at the beginning of Advent and I encourage you to pray every day Jesus come into my heart come into our community, 
come into our world. As Jesus comes, he came to a stable. He was born and, and laid in a manger, just like this one, I imagine. And the angels, whenever they came to the shepherds, the angels said, peace. There will be peace and goodwill from God to, to all people. I believe when Jesus comes, that peace comes to us, and in, in, I'm going to mention three ways. The first way is, when, when we pray and ask Jesus to come, He eases, He calms our worries. You know, peace means not being quite so afraid, or not, not so worried. And right now, there are a lot of people worried in the world. Maybe there are things that you're worried about. Maybe you're worried about your family or someone you know who's sick. Or, I'm not sure what you might be worried about, but when we pray, Jesus, come into my heart, I believe that he helps to, to calm our worries and our fears. Another thing that Jesus calms whenever we ask him to come is our tensions. I once knew, uh, I once knew a little guy who, when he got mad, he put his lips together, he got really tense. And we would say, um, calm down, you know, relax. And whenever he could relax physically, he wasn't quite so angry. Well, I think when we pray, if, we're, if we get angry or upset with someone and we pray, Jesus, come into my heart and help me not feel so angry. He has a way of calming our tensions and our anger. The third thing that I think Jesus comes is when we're angry with others. Whenever we get upset with someone and we, and we pray, we ask Jesus to come and help us in our anger or in our relationships, Jesus calms those two. He helps us to get along better with people. And he helps us find answers to the broken problems, to the, to the things that we're upset about, to the, to the conundrums that, that we have that, that cause conflict. Jesus calms our worries, he calms our, our tensions, and I believe he calms our, our relationships. And, and all of that means Jesus is our peace. He helps us. Whenever I first came in the stall here with Astro, she was afraid of me. And it was only a few minutes until, look, she's right next to me now. Of course the feed helped a little, but now we're buddies. And that's the coolest thing. That is a blessing. And there she goes, bumping into the camera. But that's okay. I wanted to say a, a little more um, about Jesus' coming. But more, more to the rest of us, to everyone now. Um, when Jesus came to Bethlehem in the 3 or 4 B.C., you know, they... Caesar was doing a, a registration, and the, and the people knew. Registration means taxes, you know? And they were anxious. They were concerned about what was going on in the world around them. It was a difficult time for the Jewish people in Palestine because of the Roman occupation. It, it, was, a, it was a hard time. And yet, Jesus came, and the angels proclaimed it, peace, peace on earth to all people. And so, Jesus came at a time almost like this. <laughs> this is a, a, a scary time. We continue to have these illnesses. We continue to know people who are dying from COVID and Jesus comes at times just like this. He comes to, to relieve our worries. He comes to help us physically with the challenges we face. And he comes to help us in the re in challenging relationships. You know, we. That's another thing that's going on right now. There's brokenness in our world. There's broken relationships and there are struggles. Jesus comes to calm our fears. Jesus comes to calm and heal our bodies. Jesus comes to heal our relationships. Jesus is our peace. So I want to invite you to celebrate that peace this Christmas season, this night. As we remember Jesus' birth, we remember Jesus comes. Jesus comes to his people. That's, that's our celebration. Jesus comes. So I invite you, I, again, I, I invite you to ask Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come into our hearts. Come into our community. Come into our world. 
and, and make a difference. Make a difference in, in, in all the struggles that we see going on around us. This is our prayer this Christmas season. And again, I, I wish you Merry Christmas, and I invite you, um, it, this would be the time to grab your candles. Um, we are going to, to hear some of the bells playing and, and to light like candles. I, I invite you to share in that candle lighting, remembering times when we've been in our sanctuary, but also um, just knowing that Christ is with us. He comes to us whether we're in a, in, a, in a pristine sanctuary or whether we're in a stable which is full of life. You know, this is life. Life down and dirty. And isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful? May God bless you as we light our candles next. This is the time in our service when I really want to invite you all to pause to pause, to, to think about, again, the ambiance of, of a worship service here in our sanctuary, or to think about the lights, the friends, the family, um, whether you're alone at home, or whether you're with a, a family, or whether you're concerned about your health or, or any other things that are going on in the world around us. I want to invite you to think about this evening, about Christmas Eve, about the coming of Christ, about the good news the angels shared with the shepherds that evening. And I invite you to hear, as, as we prepare for our candle lighting, words from, first, from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The light of Christ continues to shine in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. With these words, I invite you to light your candles, to accept and acknowledge the light of Christ that is in you. To accept and acknowledge the light of Christ that is in you and shines through you. As we sing together, Silent Night. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come into our hearts, come into our community, come into our world. Be born in us today. We ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people say, Amen. Merry Christmas, and God bless you all.